Good. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yaatiku al-Aafiyah. Al-Yom nibda liqana al-Thalith min al-Hadrat Shakespeare fi al-Jama' al-Islamiya fi Gaza. Kajuzo min mukafahat yani l-ihtiyat li dud virus corona li tittakhidhu al-Alam kullu haqiqa. Uh, so this is our uh, third uh, online session on Shakespeare as part of our uh, precautions against uh, the anti uh, uh, against the coronavirus that is spreading worldwide this uh, danger that we have to take care of we have to pay attention we have to be very careful uh, Okay, so uh, again, before I start, I want you all to uh, be careful, stay at home if you can, and wash your hands as much as you can with soap, not soup, of course. Today we'll uh, uh, examine uh, two significant scenes in, in Shakespeare's uh, play Hamlet. Uh, we come uh, to the ending of uh, Act uh, Four, we uh, discuss uh, major issues in scenes uh, six and, and seven. Now, uh, if you uh, want to follow me and open your uh, text box, scene number six is a very uh, short scene. It's actually almost one page and uh, about uh, 35 lines. This is a very short scene, a very small one, but it's a very significant uh, scene. Uh, now, uh, the, the, the main thing here is that Horatio gets a letter from Hamlet. Remember, Hamlet was sent to, to England to be, uh, to be killed. Uh, and now Hamlet is sending a letter telling Horatio he is coming back. And he's telling him about this uh, unbelievable adventure and see what happened. Uh, the story is that uh, a ship of pirates attacked the ship and during the, uh, the fighting, Hamlet managed to jump into the other uh, ship and those pirates saved him and the ship uh, uh, sent by the king uh, continued its journey towards England with uh, uh, fought, uh, what's his name, uh, Matt and Pat. Uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Now Hamlet describes these pirates as, um, uh, as thieves of mercy. And this is, you know, pirates are generally uh, bad people, they're thieves. Uh, they're not good people uh, at all. Uh, they're not respected. Uh, it's true that Hollywood sometimes turns them into, into heroes, but in general, uh, these are thieves. But for Hamlet, they are thieves of mercy. They saved his life. There's something that is not clear in this uh, scene. Uh, I remember I just said that the scene is very uh, short, but uh, because it all happens, basically happens off stage. And uh, if it takes a place on, on the stage, it, it probably would require two or three hours. It's a very long, uh, thing to, to take place, but Shakespeare prefers to put it off stage. But we still don't know how Hamlet, uh, whether this was chance, like did the king, uh, did, sorry, did uh, the, the ship of pirates by chance meet, uh, uh, encounter this, this ship uh, and saved Hamlet? Did Hamlet plan this? Did he know them before? Because what he tells Horatio in the letter is that I'm going to do a good turn for them. So they saved my life, they did something good for me, and I'm going to do something good in return. I'm going to do them a favor. What is the favor? We don't know. And this again opens up so many uh, questions about Hamlet, who he is. How, how, how did he come to know those bad people, those thieves, those pirates? There are no answers in the play, but again, this is Shakespeare's way of 
inviting us to be open to discussions, to open, to be open to uh, to questions. And it's not easy to answer who Hamlet is and how he came to know the, uh, those people. Now, in the letter, Hamlet writes to uh, to Horatio, telling them that I'm also sending these letters to to, to the king, and I should uh, please come with the two gentlemen because I'm uh, I'm going to meet you and tell you uh, things that. Uh, uh, will shock you. He, he says, let the king have the letters I have sent and repair thou to me with, with as such haste as thou wouldst fly dead. Come quickly, meet me as fast as you would be flying death. And it's interesting how Hamlet here is talking about flying death rather than going to death, rather than, rather than dying. Uh, he doesn't explain, he doesn't give details. He says, I have words to speak in thine ear will make thee dumb, yet are they much too light for the bore of the matter. The words will shock you, will uh, shake you at the same time. Now, uh, uh, like I just said, the events take place off stage and are told to us in a few lines. In reality, they could cover hours and hours, but that's, and don't forget that Hamlet is Shakespeare's longest play. Hamlet is about 4,000 lines. Uh, Macbeth is 2,000, uh, uh, 2,500 lines, I guess. Uh, Hamlet speaks, Hamlet alone speaks 1,500 lines. It's close to some of Shakespeare's uh, plays this world. So yeah, he, many things happen off stage because there wasn't enough time, but also because they want us to raise questions. Again, how did Hamlet get to know these pirates? Is it by fate or by design? Did he plan this? Remember, he was confident when he accepted his, uh, his, his, uh, the king's request to go to England, to be sent to England, to be safe there. And we know he was going to be killed. So did Hamlet plan something? Was it fate? Was it providence? Did just God send uh, uh, those uh, 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 people to save him? Did they know his father before? Did his father, you know, have business with those people? Did they work for his uh, father? We don't know. Now, the uh, Hamlet's two schoolboys uh, go to England. We don't know what's going to happen to them so far. Uh, and uh, th there's this thing, if Hamlet is, like he was heading to England very quickly, and he also is coming back very quickly to uh, to Elsinore, coming back to uh, to Denmark. Uh, why is he coming back quickly? Also, is is also a question uh, that we need to think to think about. Now, the most significant thing about this part is that we have a different Hamlet. Remember, Hamlet was growing up gradually. He was first a man of thinking, very delicate, very. A gentle uh, prince thinking, pondering, deliberating, and meditating uh, to be or not to be, and uh, other things. He changed a little bit. He was lively when the actors came. Uh, he uh, he was different in his last uh, uh, soliloquy. He wanted his thoughts to be bloody. And after he comes back, he's a totally different man. He's even more mature than ever before. He's changed forever. Now, if you, uh, if you consider this from uh, uh, an archetypal, I'm not sure if you studied archetypal images before. An, archetype, uh, an archetypal image is an image that is universal, that keeps uh, uh, being repeated in, in, in literary works that has been mentioned hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, and that people still use it. Like, for example, using a journey through at the sea as some kind of rebirth, as some kind of resurrection, as some kind of, you know, it's like somebody being born again. When somebody is born and babies are born, they are, you know, surrounded with, with some kind of water from their mom's uh, uh, wombs, and then this is a new life for them. And the sea here is, uh, the, the, the image here, the archetypal image is that the sea uh, cleansed Hamlet. The sea uh, gave us a different Hamlet. Uh, as in, in, in Christianity, this is called uh, symbolism. So here Hamlet is quick to take action, the way he jumped from ship to ship, the way he wrote uh, the, the, the letters, the way he was uh, uh, communicating his ideas with, 
with Horatio and we, we still don't know what exactly happened. Probably he'll say something later on. But his style, his clarity, uh, the latter, everything uh, here shows that Hamlet is very energetic, very active and different from the one before. Now again, uh, Hamlet is not talking about dying. He's talking about flying death. Uh, classically, a sea uh, voyage is usually symbolically used as some kind of rebirth, resurrection, and baptism. Now, there's a quote here. Uh, uh, I want you to also to consider very carefully. It says that characters, uh, old selves, die and emerge, sea change. I love this term. He's not only changed, he's sea change. He's sea, sea, sea change. He changed because of of the sea. Now, why did Hamlet change? Was it just simply providence, God? Was it his design? Was it the sea? We're not sure. But the Hamlet we have here, the Hamlet we will be having in Act 5 is a totally different Hamlet from the tortured young man who was deliberating every uh, uh, little thing. Now, I'll give you two or three uh, minutes uh, for comments and for questions. If somebody wants to ask uh, something, please go on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go on, sir. Uh, I was asking, uh, what do you mean by, by this scene is off stage? How, how, how it works, like it's the play, how, how it's off stage? Okay, uh, uh, usually not everything happens on stage. Many things are reported, are uh, they take place uh, off stage and they are reported. They, we don't, we don't so who informs the audience about this scene? Okay, it's either a messenger or one of the characters just tells us what, what exactly happened. Usually the soldier, we see this in Macbeth, we see this in Hamlet, somebody telling like uh, the, what happened to old uh, Hamlet, the king, uh, is something that happened Horatio. off stage. Horatio told us uh, what happened uh, to old Hamlet, to old Fortinbras, and he told us something about. Uh, so usually this happens very briefly. It, 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 it basically saves a lot of time, but uh, traditionally this was something to avoid, you know, some gory, bloody scenes in the past. Uh, uh, executions, uh, deaths would take place uh, off stage because, you know, they wanted, this, this was the, the decorum at that time. They didn't want to offend the, the, the audience and, and, and the, the, the people who uh, would be watching these uh, kind of uh, very savage, very barbaric uh, crimes or deaths or blood. So usually blood, deaths uh, uh, mainly uh, uh, take place off stage. And now, again, it depends on how, uh, how smart the author is sometimes what to include on stage and what to include you know, off stage. Someone else wanted to say something? Uh, I, I, I don't know, Ahmed is asking, uh, is an archetype a motif? I, I don't know, I honestly don't know. Uh, but I think some motifs could be part of the archetype. Archetype, the archetypal image. Uh, we see usually uh, recurrent images of of of, of blood, of uh, uh, of blackness, of whiteness, of roses, of flowers. These are uh, probably uh, motifs. Sometimes they can be uh, uh, archetypal, and sometimes they're not. Archetypal, basically. It, by the way, in psychology, we speak about this a lot. This is. Uh, analyzing Hamlet, uh, Hamlet's rebirth here is a psycho, uh, psycho uh, psychoanalytical uh, thing. It's a very important uh, thing that you could discuss or do in further uh, research. How the sea uh, cleanses us and brings us, makes us new. Anyone else? Okay, when we move to scene uh, uh, seven, act four, uh, two major things happen. Remember scene five, King basically calmed Laertes down and he told him, I'll give you everything, my kingdom, my crown, everything. If I, uh, if I played a role in the death of your father, just let's talk, calm down. And now they come back, uh, probably not much time passed between these two scenes. And 
Laertes is clearly on Claudius's side. He's in his crib, he's controlled, he's easily manipulated by, uh, by uh, uh, the king. And the plan here is what to do next. So Hamlet was sent to be killed, to die. If Hamlet does not uh, die, the king has a plan to use Laertes against Hamlet to kill Hamlet. And this way he's actually killing two, two, two young men with one, with one stone. He gets rid of, of both of them. So uh, uh, the king suggests, because we know, he, he tells us how Laertes is a, is a, is a, is a swordsman, he's a strong uh, man, he's good with his uh, sword, and he suggests a duel, a fight between both of them. And then Laertes says, okay, so I'm not sure if this is like some kind of a sport here to be not to be taken seriously, but he uh, uh, says, okay, Laertes, while you're doing this, you could change your foil, your sword, your fake one that doesn't hurt with a real one. And, and then you kill, you kill Hamlet and it, it goes like an accident. And even the queen might think this is an accident. Laertes is even more devilish. He's more bent to take revenge. He says, he agrees and says, I have also I got poison with me. I'll poison the sword. So if he is not killed by the stab, he can be instantly killed by the deadly poison. And look at this treacherous plot. Both, they both agree to, kill, to murder Hamlet just right in front of, uh, of, of us here. Just when we thought that Hamlet has hope that Hamlet is going to come back and probably kill the king and end this uh, thing for forever. Uh, and we'll see how the king keeps pushing Laertes, manipulating uh, him, and just to make sure to guarantee that he's going to be uh, doing the deed. Now, uh, the queen comes on stage and says, Ophelia died. She drowned. In actually one of the most uh, painful, the saddest uh, uh, bits of the whole play, but We'll see how it, it goes in, in a bit. So I will go through some of the quotes between uh, Laertes and the king. Uh, here Laertes says, it appears, it, it will appear, but tell me why you proceeded not against these feats, these facts. Why did you send, why did you send him uh, to, to England? Why didn't you do, uh, punish him for this? He's asking uh, the, the king. And the king gives him two reasons. Very interesting. For the first time, we have something interesting, the dynamic between the king and, and the queen. He gives him two reasons. Number one, the queen, his mother, she loves, what does, what does exactly he says? The queen, his mother, she loves uh, by his locks. Lives, lives, lives. She lives by his, I can't find oh, the word. The queen, his mother, lives almost by his locks. She loves him very much. And I can't do anything to him because of the queen. And then he says also the people, the masses, the general, the public. We, we, we heard this. This is not the first time we hear, we hear this. The people love Hamlet. He's loved. He's a very famous uh, 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 man. He's loved by many people. He didn't do much to them in front of us. But we deduce that he's nice. He's a gentleman in the way he treated the, uh, the, the God. And now the king is expressing his love to, uh, 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 to, to the queen. Remember, there's, we haven't seen probably any kind of affection between the king and the queen. Okay. No, I just uh, got disconnected. I am not sure if this is going to save what we did just now. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yes, yes, doctor, yes. Uh, is it recording? I don't know. Is it recording? It How do we know? It is, it is, it is I have no idea. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It's recording. It's recording, yes. Of the... I got disconnected. I'm, I'm back. So the king didn't uh, send uh, Ham, punish Hamlet for killing Polonius because, uh, because of his wife, the queen, who lives almost by Hamlet's uh, locks, and because the public, the masses, love, uh, love Hamlet very, uh, very much, and. Uh, I, I was saying that uh, we've, we haven't seen the king and the queen alone on the stage. There were always people around him. We haven't seen any kind of intimacy here. here. But here the king is expressing this love to, uh, to, to this woman. He says, I couldn't, but by her, the other motive, he says, uh, she's conjunctive to my, soul, my life and soul. She's connected. She's linked to my soul and, and, and my life. That as the star moves, not by but in his sphere i could not but buy her i live i am dependent on her i love her very much we are connected and this is a rare instant uh, instance in which the, the king is expressing his love to uh, to his wife but it shows how this man is remember is cunning he's smart he knows what he's what he's doing he, at least he knows what the people uh, do what they like what they don't like and that is next talks about uh, how again he he lost his his father to death and how he lost his uh, sister Ophelia to insanity describes here in a beautiful image here a sister driven into desperate terms whose worth if praises may go back again stood challenger on mount of all the age for her perfection but my revenge will come she's the most beautiful young lady alive uh, her beauty is unmatched and again look at how. Uh, the physical beauty of the woman is emphasized rather than anything else. And look at again how Laertes is determined to take, uh, to take revenge. So the plan is to kill Hamlet and to pretend that it's, it's an accident. He says the king here, but even his mother shall uncharge the practice and call it uh, an incident. So again, the king has, a, uh, has one uh, Laertes to his uh, to his si side, but even now, even at this moment, he still keeps you know pulling him into his webs. Uh, uh, he's making him. Uh, uh, he he wants to guarantee one hundred percent that uh, Laertes is not going to change his mind. He's not going to change his heart. That he's going to kill Hamlet. He says, Laertes, was your father dear to you? Or are you like the painting of Sora? This is very provocative here. Do you really love your father or are you just pretending? Are you just momentarily expressing it, the anger that's going to go away in a moment? A face without a heart? Time qualifies the spark and fire of it. Time sometimes, you know, uh, makes us forget. There lives within the very flame of love a kind of wick or snuff that will abate. It's going to go. Hamlet comes back. What would you undertake to show yourself, your father's son indeed? More than words. Now you're giving me your word. You're promising me. You're, going, you're saying you, you want to kill Hamlet. But when Hamlet shows up, what are you going to do? Is it going to be only words? Do you love, do you really love his father? And this is, we get, the most vicious line in the whole play, the most barbaric line, probably. He says, to cut his throat in the church. Laertes wants to kill Hamlet, even if he has to cut his throat, even if he has to do it in the church. Does this remind you of anything, anybody? Mm? Uh Ophelia, like telling Ophelia to go to Nanari. Okay, what else? It reminds me, it reminds me when uh, Hamlet uh -huh. uh, wanted to kill the king, but he saw him praying. Thank you very much, Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, correct. 100%. Because the same thing happened before. Somebody was in the church. Somebody was uh, supposed to be killed. But because he was in... Uh, uh, 
uh, in a church, he didn't do it. And the thing here is that uh, Hamlet did not kill the king, remember, because he didn't want to send him to heaven at the time when his father was killed midst uh, uh, sins. Uh, now, uh, Laertes says to cut his throat in the church. Oh, the irony here. This is one of the most, probably the cruelest ironies in the whole, the harshest ironies in the whole play. Can you expect, don't look at the book, can you expect what the king is going to say? Uh, if somebody wants to write down or we can read. Yeah, anybody, can you guess? Yes, I think, I think he, he, he would like agree with him. Mm -hmm. He wanted Hamlet dead in, in any way. Okay, he would say, okay, do it. What else? Okay, how, how is he going to say it? Is he going to say, no, haram, killing somebody in the church is, is not okay. Get him out of the church, then do whatever you want. What do you expect? Maybe he will, he will make a plan to kill Hamlet. Another plan. Because he is a man of plan. Okay. Um, we know this is an, an expression here. I'll kill him even if he happens to be in a church. Even if he is taking refuge in a church. So you think they're going to take uh, to do a plan and then the plan is going to be what? Killing, to kill Hamlet outside? What do you think? Now, I'll, I'll show you here what the king says next. He says, no place, he agrees, like you said, of course he agrees. No place indeed should murder sanctuarize. Revenge should have no bounds. Revenge is revenge. Murder, if you want to kill somebody, you just kill him. No place makes murder a taboo or something wrong. This is definitely wrong. Killing people is wrong. Killing them in a church is even worse. And this is, again, the irony continues here. Imagine, now, Shakespeare is doing something fascinating. Yes, he's preparing us to the ending of the play. He makes us like Hamlet even more because he wants us to see how Hamlet refused to kill somebody in the church. And again, he wants us to see how horrible this thing is. So we sympathize and identify more with, with Hamlet and we distance ourselves as much as possible from, from himself. So this is part of the plan here, how uh, 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 he invites him to uh, a duel. And this is the part that speaks about uh, the, 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 the poison. So when Laertes says, I'm going to poison the foil, the, the sword, the king said, okay, even if you don't cut him, even if you don't stab him, I'm preparing him a poison drink. So he's going to die. Anyway, I'm standing uh, by you. Now, remember I said in the classes at the beginning of the course that uh, ear, there were so many, I'm not sure if, you, if somebody can count how many times the word ear and ears, uh, you know, was mentioned in the, in the play. Every time there's ears, 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 hearing, hear, eaves dropping and uh, overhearing and spying. And ears and hearing in this play have always been uh, associated with, uh, with uh, poisoning, the negative uh, meaning. So the words are mentioned so many times and they're usually in the negative uh, 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 sense. And almost every scene, there's somebody poisoning somebody. It happened literally when old Hamlet was poisoned, was killed. And it kept happening metaphorically when Ophelia was poisoned by her brother, when Ophelia was poisoned by her father, by the king, when, when Hamlet was poisoned by the, the, the ghost, when Laertes is now being uh, poisoned by uh, uh, Ahmed, this could, I could describe this as a motif here, the idea of poisoning here, poisoning, talking to people, uh, changing their minds and uh, pushing them to commit murder and, and, and kill people. Now, Ophelia's death is narrated, uh, is told to us. Again, uh, Khaled, you asked about things happening off stage. Uh, Ophelia's death does not happen on stage. It's reported to us, and it's reported to us by by the queen and the queen comes on the stage and says, 
or woe doth tread upon another's heel, so fast they follow. <clears throat> Sorry. It says, one woe doth tread upon another's heel, so fast they follow. And this is like what the king said, uh, that, uh, that uh, sorrows come in battalions. They don't come single spies. It's exactly the same. Your sisters drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Oh, where? There is a, pillow, and a willow grows a slant, a brook. She talks about, and the willow here is in literature, is also an image of death. This kind of tree, tree is, is, uh, um, uh, is usually associated with, with bad omen, with uh, uh, pessimism, with death. So there is a willow grows a, uh, a slant, a brook that shows his whole, I'm going to come back to this in, in, in a bit, but the thing here is that Look at how, again, Ophelia is associated with flowers. She was collecting flowers and daisies and purples. Alas, then she's drowned. And the queen says, drowned, drowned. Now, uh, death of a woman, I'm tightening this, uh, tightening this with death of a woman because uh, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, about Ophelia's death. Now, uh, Shakespeare creates varieties in his play. Uh, we have Ophelia, who is very passive, very submissive. Actually, she's pitiably passive, to the extent of pity. Sometimes we view her as gullible, as too submissive. I asked you a question, how much you would blame Ophelia for, for, uh, for, for her own demise. Now, Laertes is, is active, but he's rashly active. But at the same time, he's gullible. He's being easily used by, by the king. And Hamlet is melancholic, contemplative at the beginning of the play. And he changes, develops, matures into a man of action. Now, I want you to think of this question. Did Ophelia die accidentally? Or did she kill herself? Now, what happens is that we don't know. We don't know whether she committed suicide or whether she died by accident. She slept, she was insane, she, was, she didn't know where she was, and she just drowned. And I want you to, 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 tell, uh, to tell me whether this, what this means. Uh, this is one of the questions we'll probably discuss uh, after this class. But can somebody tell me, what do you think? Uh, if it is suicide, does it mean anything? If it is an accident, does it mean something else? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, I think it, uh, it uh, she commits uh, suicide because it, all of action in the play uh, leads to the uh, all of action leads to the, <coughs> to, the to her death. Uh, mm -hmm. She lost her father. She lost her lover, and uh, her brother tells her leave uh, Hamlet. Okay. And oh, so you're saying she, uh, she committed suicide. She took a decision to take her own life. Yes, maybe. Sorry, Ahmed is saying that it happened off stage. Uh, when the queen reported the death, the queen made it look like an accident. She just said she drowned because she gives the, we'll, we'll see the details. She was wearing uh, heavy clothes and uh, they were soaked with water and she was pulled down. So yeah, we're not sure. This is again something we need to discuss. And uh, Maram says, I think it's an accident. Not sure. Can you can you tell us, Maram, what that could indicate? Uh, Khalid is suggesting that because as a as a female character, she is in, inferior. She doesn't deserve to die on stage, uh, and that's why it happens off stage. That is also. Uh, possible, but I, I want, let me here read, uh, Zaid says, I think it was an accident. What, what do you think? Why, why do you think so, Zaid? Zaid? Why wouldn't she, for example, kill herself? Why is it an accident? I want you to keep thinking of this issue. We can come back to it probably next class. There's a question at the, at the end of these, this lecture. Now, there's a book here I'm, I'm recommending. It's called Over Her Dead Body, Death, Femininity, femininity and 
the aesthetic. Maybe you mentioned you studied this with Dr. Akram by uh, Elizabeth uh, Bronfen. She says uh, uh, she explored. I'm quoting another book actually. She has explored the multiple ways in which the patriarchy figures the conjunction of femininity with death and the aesthetic, and the fact that the female body as an object of aesthetic contemplation is also bound up with a certain violence towards femininity, towards women. Women are always associated with death. Women always die. And this is something in interesting because it happens almost all the time in, uh, in, in Shakespeare. Maram said she didn't kill herself when her life was, was worse. Do you mean she could have killed her life earlier? What's worse than losing Hamlet and losing one's father? Anyway, keep thinking of this, uh, this issue. Now look at, again, how, remember when I said, Hamlet obeys, says, I'll, I'll obey my mom, and nothing happens to him. Not exactly nothing, but compare that with when Ophelia said, I'll obey my father, and what happened to her, she, she, she was destroyed, she lost everything. Hamlet goes to the sea through water and he is reborn. He comes back more powerful, almost invincible. And uh, the, the uh, Ahmed, okay, Ahmed, I think you're saying, suggesting a conspiracy theory here that somebody killed her. Maybe, okay, maybe Claudius killed her, had her killed. I think this is a very interesting point. I, I never thought of this. Do you know to make Laertes even angrier? But going back to my point, Ophelia goes to water, she's not reborn, she's not resurrected, she dies. And, and keep comparing between what happens here. Now, look at the difference between death and uh, I, 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 I describe this as ice and fire. She dies in water, but look at how fiery, how uh, Laertes uses imagery of fire to express his anger. Laertes says, too much of water hast thou, Ophelia, poor Ophelia. And therefore I forbid my tears, I don't want to cry. But yet, it's our trick nature, her custom holds, let shame say what it will. When these are gone, the woman will be out. Adieu, my lord, I have a speech of fire. The fane would blaze. With the image here of fire, and he exits, leaves this uh, uh, the state or the king and the that queen. And the queen, uh, he tells, the king tells the, tells the queen, and yet another dramatic irony, let's follow Gertrude, how much I had to do to calm his rage down. I was doing my best to calm him down. So he doesn't do anything and anything harmful to uh, to anybody or to Hamlet. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start. Therefore, let's follow. He says the death of Ophelia is going probably to infuriate him even more. He might do something to to Hamlet, and this could be uh, actually uh, supported by uh, Ahmed's idea. Ahmed, uh, Ahmed uh, Dadir, uh, that maybe somebody, uh, uh, somebody killed uh, Ophelia. And Ahmed Nihad says, what happened to Hamlet is exactly the same as what happened to, with Ophelia and even lost uh, the crown and talked to the ghost. He doesn't die, nor does he go mad or commit suicide. Why? Because he's a man, because he's a, uh, he's, you know, uh, Elizabeth in England, this, this, a man is usually more powerful, stronger than a woman. Yeah, thank you, Muhammad. Emotional, so uh, Muhammad al Khatib, do you mean she killed herself or she just died? When you say maybe Shakespeare wants to tell us that women are emotional. Maybe Shakespeare is not telling us that she is uh, emotional as a woman. Maybe Shakespeare is showing how the society is depicting women as sentimental and emotional. Laertes didn't go to see her outside promptly. He, it's true, well, we mentioned this last time, how Laertes is more invested in revenge and death than in taking good care of his, of his uh, uh, sister. Now, I'm not sure how much time we have. I want you to look at this speech by the queen. 
Many critics do not like this speech. They say it's, remember the speech by the king, the first speech by the king, Acts 1 and 1, was well, well prepared, very highly poetic, and uh, uh, to the extent that we know the king was clearly hiding something. Uh, what happened here is that uh, the queen reports the death of Ophelia in, in, a, in a speech that is, it's called a sit piece, like in football, you know, a sit piece. Uh, many people think this is Shakespeare making a cameo. He, this is Shakespeare talking to us. This is not the queen, this is not her language. This is not the time, the place, the mood, the atmosphere to use poetry in this very eloquent, articulate way. Someone is dead. Her son is away. Somebody is planning to take revenge. And the queen is poetically just lamenting the death of, uh, of Ophelia, talking about her in a very, very beautiful language. Now, there are two types of, of critics here, two opinions, two main opinions. Number one, uh, the first group suggests that Shakespeare is uh, is developing. Okay, let let me just go back to this issue. That Shakespeare is uh, is probably suggesting two two main things. The first group of critics say that this uh, speech by Gertrude, which is very much anthologized uh, of her telling. Uh, uh, what happened to, to, to Ophelia is very poetic. One of the most poetic uh, set pieces in the whole play. It is short and it could be Shakespeare talking to us directly because this is his early lyrical style rather than the style of Gertrude. Now many critics say again, this is unrealistic because at times of death, your pain, your, your sight is simply not okay. You can't speak this eloquently, this articulately. Uh, uh, in, in such a situation. So it doesn't sound like Gertrude talking. Or again, I'm asking the question, is it that women are eloquent when they are talking about death? Remember Ophelia was crazy, but she was very poetic, very, very eloquent when, uh, when she went crazy talking about death when her father died. Now, what Gertrude says here, what she says she observed about the death of Ophelia raises many questions and problems. Her account is, according to critics, is too, too sweet, too rich, too utterly improbable to fit either the situation or the narrator. This is not Gertrude's language. And this is not the situation to talk this, this poetically, Gertrude. Now, uh, some other groups say, uh, trying to defend this, like uh, justify it, they say that uh, probably, perhaps Gertrude is trying to defend Hamlet. She's doing this to Ophelia to make Laertes less angry. So critics argue that uh, the same thing happened to Ophelia. She reacted in the same way when her father died. So there is a pattern here. So perhaps Gertrude's love to her son Hamlet made her sanitize uh, Ophelia's death deliberately to spare Laertes' feelings and thus not to add to Hamlet's anger. She wants to present her. She even didn't say that she killed herself if she killed herself because she didn't want her to be angrier and angrier. She didn't want Laertes to be angrier and angrier. So the idea is that the water is to blame, her clothes are to blame, the society is to blame for the death of, of Ophelia. Now, uh, just two minutes and I'll give you the, the chance to talk. There are major issues here. Shakespeare develops the play as a play of revenge. But this time we don't have a young prince who contemplates and thinks. This time we have uncomplicated, rash young man, Laertes, who doesn't go through any of Hamlet's celebrations. The king uh, is asking Laertes if he really loved his father. And this is one of the scariest moments in the play. Do you really love your father? If you love your father, kill that man. Kill Hamlet. Now, it turns here, this scene of the king poisoning Laertes, turns the whole, this bereaved son into a killing machine. Serve the king's ulterior motive. The king is doing this not because he, he loves Polonius or loves Laertes, because he wants to get rid of both of them. And to cut 
his throat in the church is a cruel irony. The audience know that Hamlet spared the king's life because he was in a church. And now Hamlet is probably threatened of being killed even if he were, was in a church. Laertes is manipulated by the king easily. He's consumed by hate. He's overwhelmed with revenge that he loses his sense of honor. As a young man, you don't kill somebody if he is in the church. And as Khalid suggested, he even doesn't care about his, uh, his sister. Other major issues in the play is again, how Shakespeare is presenting kings as manipulative, as lying, as cunning, as villains, as pure evil. The, the death of Ophelia, what it means, whether it is suicide or uh, an accident, what, what, it, what that indicates. And the question, the most important one, what is in store for Hamlet? What's going to happen? I'll give you time to ask and, uh, and I'll read your commentary. There are two questions here. Uh, uh, maybe you can spend time on, uh, on Facebook, on our group. So some people, some critics claim that Shakespeare was too afraid to criticize the monarchy. What do you think? Did Ophelia just uh, simply die by accident or was it suicide? What is Shakespeare communicating? Support either opinion. Now very quickly, Khalid says, Ahmed, uh, can you hear me Ahmed Nihad? Do you want to say what you have in mind? Um, yeah. Um, like always when, when we compare between Marlowe and Shakespeare, um, uh, do you hear me? Yeah. Um, always, uh, like we see that, uh, we say that Marlowe always um, uses this uh, highly sophisticated language, always uh, speaks in poetry, everybody uh, um, speaks in verse. Um, however, Shakespeare is more realistic, he uses uh, verse, sometimes prose, even kings talks in prose when it is necessary. Um, so why a queen uh, uh, in a death scene, um, a, a girl, Philia, that is close to the um, to the monarchy, to the family, uh, dies or maybe commits suicide, and now she's like uh, talking in, in verse. Like uh, this could be argued as a weak point in, in Shakespeare's um, play. Or is it like intended? Is he like, I don't know, is he like saying something uh, that uh, they killed her and she knew and the king wanted her, as Khaled said, wanted her to, to say these words and then um, after Ophelia dies, I don't know, this is like too far. Uh, like it could be like a weak point. In the play? I don't know. In Shakespeare's, yeah, I don't know. Like. Definitely, but who, who are we to say this about, about Shakespeare? I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't. You could, do, you could do that. It's up to you. But yeah, we, it could be a point of weakness. But No, also I don't say that this is a weak point, but I say that uh, what I'm saying is, um, like, why in Marlowe we say that for this reason Shakespeare is better? And now it's, Shakespeare okay. is doing it. The thing is that Marlowe does this all the time, everybody, all situations. But Shakespeare changes. That's the, that's the thing here. Shakespeare is... Yeah, so it is intentional. In Shakespeare. Here, the, the use of poetry in such a situation, like it has a meaning, it has oh. a, an, an implicit message. The, the thing, Ahmed, is that, uh, again, I don't know, honestly. But what I have in mind is that the king, uh, the, uh, the situation where there's somebody who has just And the death of this person is painful to the queen, to everybody. And the, the thing is that when people die, we don't uh, 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 speak this eloquently about their death, especially just moments after their death. This is what I have. This is what critics comment on. Uh, Wahad, number one, Gertrude, we've seen her language before. She talked too little. She never sh uh, showed any, uh, any of poeticality. Okay? Now, the second thing is that the situation, somebody has just died, uh, Gertrude. You don't do this. Okay? 
So people think this is a point of weakness. Shakespeare is not, you know, doing like, why is he doing this? Some people say he's drawing some early, early, uh, you know, lyrical poetry. But some critics uh, believe that uh, Gertrude is doing this to protect Hamlet. She's doing her best to use the best kind of language to lament uh, Ophelia so she can make uh, uh, Laertes feel good about this, which is in a way very stupid. Someone else? Uh, yes. Uh... I think uh, I think Ophelia was killed by uh, the queen. She ordered some soldiers like that, to come that here. The queen herself? Yeah, yeah. I mean, she like ordered soldiers uh, to kill her. To kill her. Okay. Can you elaborate? Because she she, she yeah um, uh, she wasn't there in that moment. Okay. Uh, I think uh, her language, like uh, as Khalid said, uh, she took uh, she took in. Uh, do you mean verses? They mean her speech is is prepared. Yes. Okay. I think we're going too far here, but I will never say wrong. Uh, I will not never say no to any of your opinion. Yeah. Thank you. So I think I keep thinking about. Can you find evidence to support this in the text later on? Uh, I'll see. I'll see. Again, thank you, Muhammad. Muhammad Yasin says, "What does the queen? What does the queen have against Ophelia?" I don't I agree with you. I disagree I think with Ahmed. She's, with not, she's, not, she's not having a thing against Ophelia, but she's, she's, she's uh, doing what the king orders. She's just uh, giving a speech here, like but remember, uh, from, outside, I mean, from outside and saying that Ophelia died. She's not having a thing against Ophelia. She just okay. says, fine. Remember that uh, Hamlet told her uh, in, in the chamber when he killed uh, Polonius told her everything and she must be siding with Hamlet rather than with, uh, with the king by now. So I don't think the king told her to kill Ophelia. I don't think the king is going to tell her to do that. Not to kill, not to kill. Uh, that does not necessarily mean that the queen herself killed Ophelia, but I mean, uh, he told her like to come and say that Ophelia died just to say two lines, not to kill her. So by saying that uh, she thinks, she says, I think maybe Ophelia didn't kill herself and the queen knows uh, that she commits suicide. I, oh, are you contradicting yourself here? I think maybe Ophelia didn't kill herself and the queen knows that she commits suicide. Or maybe she sends someone to kill her uh, guys, don't go this far. I don't think the queen killed uh, Ophelia. Uh, we're going too far here. Uh, I would say yes, uh, she, uh, because like uh, she put her son in, in triples. So and you know the mothers would like to def to defend her uh, son. Sorry. Uh, uh, please take this out. Maybe this is the uh, the corona effect. Uh, don't uh, use uh, conspiracy theories as uh, evidence. But listen, when, when there are crazy ideas like this, sometimes it's interesting, but don't let them consume you. Bashar is saying, since the beginning, Ophelia was not able to make any decision. Maybe her inability pushed her to commit suicide. But, so she never takes a decision. She never takes action. And when she takes action, she kills herself? I, I, I agree that the king is not going to benefit from because the death of Ophelia is going to bring more anger in Laertes's heart against Hamlet. And this is what happened. So if you believe in this conspiracy theory, it was the king that uh, ordered Ophelia killed rather than uh, the queen. Something else? Yeah, I would like to go back to the point uh, where, where Laertes says the most vicious line uh, in the play when he says uh, to cut his throat in the church. Mm. Uh, I would say maybe this reflects something about Laertes himself is not as religious as Hamlet is. 
he doesn't think or he doesn't know that if you kill someone in the church he will not like he will go to heaven he will not like take his that's uh, also possible yeah that is a possibility yes I, I, it could be the fact that hamlet is religious but i don't think hamlet is that religious but not, yeah. not that religious but at least he knows if you killed someone praying he will go to heaven so this is like now, yeah, but he, he didn't say i am uh, if i kill him i'm going to be punished he said if i kill him he's going to be rewarded because he's praying yeah that's what i'm saying and that is a basic that everyone should know in religion i think okay cool so, he doesn't know the the least Abdurrahman here is saying the queen the queen's speech reminds me of Claudia's speech at the very beginning of the play the, they're both very poetic although the king's uh, the king's speech sounded very artificial very well planned we, we're not going to discuss the questions uh, now Ahmad we're going to I'll give you time to think about them probably uh, for the weekend just to keep you busy so you don't get outside and you stay home. Not that I, 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 I hate you. Zaid says, I think her death is planned to make the king feel pity towards Claudius and help himself so he can. Okay, you're mixing the names here. What do you mean? You're saying the king and Claudius. The king is Claudius. I think he means it's the Okay, maybe it's planned by the king so he can uh, uh, have more reasons. Well, that that's possible. That that is possible. So, see, the king is you know he sent Hamlet to be killed to England. He ha he plans for Laertes to kill him by offering him a a, a poison, a, a sword, a real sword in the in the duel, and the sword will be poison. And then there will be a drink that is uh, filled with poison. So there are layers and layers of plans. So one, one layer to this scheme by the king could be that he, ha he ordered uh, Ophelia uh, killed so he could make him even angrier. So if he fails in convincing him to kill Hamlet, there is yet more reason. If he didn't, if he doesn't kill Hamlet for his father, he kills Hamlet now for uh, uh, for Ophelia. That is something I have to think about. Okay, uh, we'll stop here. Probably, I'm not sure how how this is going to be when we upload it online, but let's uh, keep trying until we get to the best uh, uh, until we get the best results. Uh, please, if you have anything. Uh, you can either type in the, in the chat or ask. You have uh, one minute. Tayyib, thank you very much, everyone. Yatikul Afia. Khalid says, I think Zoom is, is good, but uh, many people, I couldn't hear all of you. So next time, probably we can. Uh, arrange it better, organize it better, make sure everybody participates or says uh, something. But some, some people were live with us and then they disappeared. Okay, I'll like to Thank you very much. And we'll see you inshallah in two days. Doctor. I know. When you Twitter, put Shakespeare in Gaza and what's your name? Because there's a lot of names that are what what yeah, do you mean okay. a hashtag hashtag or anything else so that it's easy to okay okay
يبدو المحاضرة ما تسجلتش عندي مش عارف I don't know I'm being very recording and the end of the day, Rahman.